Hey, how's it going? It is your muscle building coach, Lee Hayward here. And right now I'm having a conversation with one of my coaching students, Jason Golden. And the reason why I wanted to do this conversation with Jason is because he's been an action taker. Like he came out of the program about six months ago and he's getting some great results in the process. So I just want to have a conversation with him, kind of figure out like where he's, where he was, what he's doing and, and how the progress is working for him. And just kind of like share that with you so that hopefully that you can take this information and get some tips and strategies from it and help to improve your own fitness goals. So uh, Jason, for the benefit of people watching this video now, just share your journey with the Muscle After 40 Blueprint. Yeah, sure thing, Lee. Glad to be here today and um, glad to take some time to talk with you about the Muscle After 40 program. Um, just real quick uh, story. Uh, yeah. Back in 2019, uh, it was kind of when I started this process. So um, I started the process a little bit before you and I had met. And uh, I worked with a, a different online coach, uh, had some pretty good success, dropped some fat, burned some muscle. Um, well, hopefully built some muscle. Yeah, sorry, yeah, built some muscle. <laughs> Drop that fat, and burn muscle. muscle. <laughs> don't, wanna, don't wanna burn muscle. Um, <laughs> so, fun. you know, did well with, with the program. And mm -hmm. after I got through with the program, uh, yeah. I decided to go my own way. And I was on my own for a few months. And I wasn't to say happy with where I was at. I had leaned out, but it was time to start to put some muscle on now. Um, I had done the fat loss thing. Now it was time to build muscle. Um, but I didn't really know how to go about doing that without putting on fat. Because anytime I'd ever tried to bulk up in the past, it would seem like I would get more fat than I would get muscular. Um, right. I'd been following you for a number of years online from a distance, but had never really spoken with you. And it just seemed like the timing was right um, here earlier this year to reach out to you and, and inquire mm -hmm. about the program. And so I did, we had our conversation. Um, we talked about where I was at, where I wanted to go and how you could help. Uh, it made perfect sense what we could do to get there. So I didn't hesitate to jump on. And like you said, the last six months or so, mm -hmm. uh, steadily seeing uh, progress in the weight room. Um, you know, just I'm looking fuller and bigger and more muscular, but I'm not necessarily getting fatter. So, so we're doing what we set out to do right. which to, yeah. to add lean mass gradually and minimize the fat gains. Um, so right. that's kind of where we are now is, and you know, as we go further along, I can give some more details, but I, I will say one thing just off the bat, if I had been in a similar environment in my prior program, I'm sure I would have done even better in that program. And, and what you'll find as we go through this conversation is that the program I was on before was very restrictive um, mm -hmm. as far as nutrition side of things. And the workouts were, they were pretty lengthy. And it was a nice change coming into the leads program where the nutrition is not restrictive at all. And there's a lot of flexibility in what we're able to do. Right. And the, the workouts, um, they just weren't crushing me in the weight room. You know, I'm recovering better, I'm recovering quicker. Mm -hmm. um, and that's a byproduct of this program being designed for guys over 40. You know, I'll be 47 in a few months. You know, I started this when I was 45. I just turned 46, actually, kind of when I started all of this. Um, so this program is designed great for guys like us that are over 40. When you, like, when did you actually start working out for the first time? Because, like, a, a lot of guys who, who are part of the program or people that I've, I've coached on and off over the years, like, that's how it's been. It's been on and off. Okay. Like I started working out when I was in my teens and then I took some years off and then it started back again and on and off and on and off. And the problem with on and off is whatever progress you make when you're on, you're going to lose when you're off. So it's, it's, you're gaining and losing the same amount of muscle. And it's just, you're, you're going nowhere. You're spinning your wheels. right? Yeah. Just, so like, when did you actually start working out for the first time? For the first time would have been in my early teens. I was an okay. athlete when I was younger. Um, yeah. you know, I, basketball, uh, baseball, track, you know, whatever sports were available, you know, I played them. So I, I was pretty decent about lifting weights through my teens and even into my early 20s when I was in college. Okay. In you know, the weight room right there on campus. Um, I get out of school. I kind of get away from that stuff. I don't touch weights again probably until I'm like 36, 37, 38. Okay. So I spent a, you know, a pretty long time where I just, I didn't mess with anything. Now here recently, the reason I got back into it when I did in 2019 was because my son had turned 16 and I realized I wasn't setting the best example for him with the way I was approaching a lot of things. And one right. of those was the lack of hitting the weight room. And the worst thing is, you know, I've got a full-blown weight room here at the house for the most part. 
So yeah. I didn't have an excuse not to be doing it. You know, it wasn't like going to the gym's too difficult. You know, it's right there. You, know, you walk down the stairs, there it is. So, I, so that was a big motivator. And then also just, I want to remain attractive to my wife, you know, and things like that. And yeah. that's what kind of prompted me, like I said, earlier in 2019 to, to really get back into this stuff. And then, like I said, I, you know, I met, met up with you midway through this year and had you know, set up some new goals and some things like that. So it was just a perfect transition from my old program. But, you know, to answer your original question, like a lot of guys, you know, started when I was a teen, like you said, start, stop, start, stop, start, stop, <laughs> start, stop, start, stop, yeah. And if I just would have kept going. Yeah, that's that's the kicker. And and, and that's part of the, the whole program that we've got laid out now is the, the, the philosophy that I have behind the, the Muscle After 40 blueprint is it's not about this all or nothing perfection mentality. It's just be good enough but good enough consistently and that's something i mean you i know you've heard me say this before and i keep drilling it in it's like good enough but good enough consistently and once you adopt that as as a, a mindset it it's, takes the stress out of the whole program it really does it, it's it's a it's a game changer because i mean in my case i come from the bodybuilding background where you know i was competing in bodybuilding for for years on and off for years like i started my first competition was in 1995 and my last competition was in 2011. So pretty much every year from 95 until 2011, I was going through the, the, the off season bulking and pre-contest cutting. And it was an extreme approach. Like when contest cutting time came around, it was like, put on the blinders. It's, it's boiled chicken and broccoli, two hours of cardio, uh, weight training, posing practice. And your whole life is just around this contest. Like that's all it was. It, looking back at it i mean it's a very selfish sport <laughs> it is you know because when when you think of like what what's the big goal of a bodybuilding competition like I was, I was putting myself through this this torture every single year for a trophy and a handshake <laughs> like that was that was a reward at the end of the day right <laughs> it really i mean there's nothing there i mean I, i'm glad i went through the the journey i mean i, I wouldn't change it for anything but i mean like it, it's it's so stupid when you think of it. like people are just living in misery for months on end <laughs> For hopes of getting a trophy and a handshake at the end of the day and a bit of bragging rights. <laughs> you know, that's what's nice about the program, though, like you said, is um, perfection is not a requirement. And it allows yeah. you that wiggle room um, to, to have the occasional candy bar, you know, to have the occasional few sl slices of pizza, you know. Yeah. Um, we, you know, yeah, we center the majority of what we eat around the healthier one ingredient type foods, but, but we do have that room in there for the things that we enjoy. And yeah, nothing is really off limits as long as we use common sense. Um, Definitely. And then, you know, as far as the weight room goes, you know, you're not asking us to get in there for two hours at a time and, and kill ourselves. You know, most of the sessions you're going to be in and out of the actual work part of that session, 45 minutes to an hour tops, you know, and you get a little bit of time for your warm up and your stretch and your cool down. We're talking 90 minutes most times, three, four days a week on the weightlifting side of things. You know, for me, as far as cardio goes, I do a lot of walking with the dog. Um, Perfect. <laughs> you know, I'm still in a mass gaining phase, so I'm not trying to get, you know, dig out too much. Um, but even then, um, that little bit of cardio helps, you know. And, and if I needed to, you know, we've got some things we've talked about. I could ramp it up if I had to. I mean, it's sure. like, uh -huh. That's what's great about the program. It's going to help the guy that's 30, 40 pounds overweight that wants to drop it. It's going to help the guy that's 10, 20 pounds, maybe under and wants to, to build up. And it, it's going to help that guy actually that's maybe kind of in between that maybe just wants to drop about four or five pounds and just lose that little last bit of body fat, but doesn't necessarily care about having super ripped abs all the time, but he wants to look good in a t-shirt and jeans. Mm -hmm. We can help you with that in this program kind of thing. So it, it, it's pretty much it'll, it'll cover anybody, you know, and the nice thing is it's designed for the guys that are 40 and up. We definitely, mm -hmm. you know, we, we've got the, you know, the, the Facebook group, that's great for that because it's all of us older guys and they're pulling for each other, you know, and patting each other on the back. And, and there's something yeah. powerful seeing guys that are in their, their mid to late sixties that are out there really pushing hard and yeah. you know, guys that are 20, 30 years older than me that are out there really pushing it hard. It, you know, you gotta, you gotta lift your game up as well. So, um, so I really like the way everything's uh, laid out. Cool. Yeah, and just to let everyone know, like the way our Facebook group is designed, like we've got guys in there in their 30s, 40s, 50s, and some even in their 60s, right? So again, it's a more mature group. And 
you know, most of them are family men, working professionals. Like it's, it's guys who are looking to lose the dad bod, if you will, get back in shape. And a, a lot of people who come into the program are looking for a body recomposition. So it's a combination of, yeah, I want to lose that stubborn belly fat. You know, I want to obviously lose the gut and everything else, but I want to build muscle in the right places. You know, you fill up my chest, fill up my shoulders, my arms, you know, get muscle in the right places, but lose that stubborn gut. And you know, very few people are, are in the situation where they're, they don't want to lose the gut. <laughs> like <laughs> most guys over 40, there's probably a bit of body fat there that you want to lose. So like, that's always part of the program. It's always the, the fat loss element, but I like to incorporate the lean gain in there as well. All right? it's, yeah. it's not just a weight loss program. It's more a body recomposition program. Right, where we're going to focus on losing that stubborn body fat while building lean muscle in the process. And the cool thing about it is it's the same principles, regardless if you are, like you mentioned, someone who's overweight and wants to primarily drop body weight, or even someone who's underweight and wants to primarily gain weight. It's the same core principles, the same core habits. We're just going to manipulate some of the variables, right? We're going to obviously higher calorie intake for someone who's trying to gain, lower calorie intake for someone who's trying to lose. But the, the core... The habits, the training routine, the the you know the the lifestyle that you live. I mean, all the core principles are the same regardless. That that's one thing. Uh, a lot of people make mistakes. I was thinking, well, there's a bulking program and then there's a cutting program. Should I bulk? Should I cut? Should I no? <laughs> there's really just one program, and then you're going to focus on building and, and building muscle while losing body fat. There's not really a bulk and cut. And that was a big game changer for me. Once I got outside the bodybuilding world and I realized when I would go on these off season bulking programs, I put on a lot of extra body fat and then I'd have to just diet extra hard contest cutting to lose that fat. And it was a very frustrating process. It's a lot easier to just stay lean and make small lean gains versus purposely putting on a bunch of weight and then trying to trim it down. And that's what we're focusing on with you It's none of this old school bulking and having you slam back 5,000 calories a day and, you know, Put, put on like 30, 40 pounds of body weight, hopefully that maybe five of those pounds are actual muscle. Mm -hmm. I'd rather stay lean and just put on the five pounds of muscle. <laughs> right. Well, you know what's ironic is um, when I got introduced to the program at first, especially the nutrition side of things, what I realized was the principles within what we're doing here, they were basically the same principles in my prior program that I had used to shed all that fat. You know, there was a lot of calorie counting and entering it into an app and mm -hmm. you, you got to make sure that you've had that on the scale and you weighed that up. And, and it was just very, very exacting. Whereas what I've found in the last six months or so is that using the methods that you teach, I'm basically hitting those same caloric numbers for the most part, but I'm not having to go through all that tedious measurements and all that kind of stuff. So it was a real eye opener for me when you gave me my first nutrition plan and the increase in calories was subtle from where I was at. Yeah. And in essence, what it was, was like, oh, I just need to maybe add a few extra portions of protein in and maybe an extra carb here or there and a little bit of extra fat. But in essence, I'm, I'm eating the same way I did mm -hmm. to drop over 30 pounds in six months. Yeah. I'm just eating more of the same foods now to help me gain that lean mass. So the transition from fat loss to, to mass gain was just simply for me was just have a little bit larger portions at each meal. Right. Other than that, the compositions of the meals really didn't change. Mm -hmm. And in both instances, I'm still able to enjoy those, the occasional burger and fries and the occasional right. slice of pizza and stuff. So that was the other thing was like, I can do this still in both programs. It's like, yeah, you can. So it's, it's really one of those things where I had to dispel a lot of of old school thinking, the whole concept of a dirty bulk, you know, <laughs> I understood that completely. Yeah. Um, but when you, like the way you laid it out, why add that extra 30 or 40 pounds to maybe retain an extra four or five pounds of that muscle when you cut it all down? Why not just start where we are, you know, relatively lean or, or help lean somebody out and then say, okay, if you want to come back up, we can do it. You're just going to eat a little more at each meal. You're going to basically do what you were doing before we might just cut your cardio back a little bit and increase your calories a bit, but fundamentally it's the same thing. Same thing. It's just so easy to stick with it once you get into the environment and you learn how to do this stuff. That, that, that's a big game changer for a lot of people. And so like a lean gain program is just like a fat loss program. It's just, we're going to bump up the calories a bit. So instead of being in a, a slight deficit, we're in a very slight surplus, but yeah. 
it's still the same foods. It's still the same habits. When I was younger, I mean, I used to think, okay, bulking meant, you know, I'm going to eat whatever. I mean, sometimes that could mean a, a trip to McDonald's and burgers and fries and you know, <laughs> not the occasional one. Like that was kind of like doing that so I could get my calories up. Right. Yeah. You know, and I can remember like all the crazy stuff I used to do, like th- scoops of ice cream into my protein shakes and everything else and mixing it all up in the blender just to try and get the calories in. And I mean, that works in, if someone's like extremely underweight, like this, the stereotypical 98 pound weakling that you used to see in the Charles Atlas comic, right? That yeah. guy, okay. Yeah. I can understand him wanting to just do whatever he can to slam back calories, to try and put on weight, you know, just put meat on his bones. But for the average person, if, if you've got extra body fat, if you go that route to try and bulk up, you're just going to end up getting fatter. Yep. I mean, yeah, you could put on some muscle in the process, but it's going to be blurred by all the extra fat you gain. And the, the downside of that is when it comes time to eventually cut, where you like, okay, uh, I've put on some size, I filled out, I'm got some more size and strength on my frame, but now I want to trim off that body fat. When you got to switch gears and diet extra hard, then you lose a lot of that lean muscle that you potentially gained, mm-hmm. right? So it's, it's a catch 22. It really is. And the, the nice thing too is, you know, I started out as that, what you would call the skinny fat. When you lean out the right way and you're taking in the, the proper amount of calories to do it and you do add that that a little bit of muscle as you're leaning out, it does recomp you. Uh-huh. Uh, and so then, like you're saying, you know, now when we come back around to, to start to add the mass, it's just such an easier transition because it's just doing a, a little, you know, it's like I said, it's taking what, what I've already mastered and just modifying a little bit, but the fundamental parts don't change. And so um, for any skinny fat guys that are going to listen to this, you know, th- this program will work to help get you leaned out and looking muscular and then bring you back up. But mm-hmm. it's going to work just as well for the, for the guy that's at maybe 50 pounds plus that it really needs to, to go at it. Yeah, it might take a little bit longer, but the results will be there as long as you just do what, you know, you're instructed to do and, and stick with it. And once again, you don't have to be perfect. We, we talk about this a lot, you know, as long as you do just enough, often enough, long yeah. enough, you're going to get the results. And that, that does allow for that two steps forward, one step back on occasion. Sure. It's yeah. going to happen. Holidays happen. Um, <laughs> yeah. Long work days happen. Kids needing to go somewhere happens. And so you've got to, mm-hmm. you know, make some choices that maybe aren't the most ideal, but you can balance those out if you've got a plan, you know, and yeah. you're sticking to it for the most part. The, the thing with the, any fitness program is I believe you have to build in flexibility into the program or it's, it's not going to last long term. Like I've tried in the past to follow a perfect strict diet where like I was going to have like everything was to the letter, no cheat meals, no nothing. And that works. Don't get me wrong. That approach absolutely works. But the problem with it is it's relying on willpower and willpower never lasts long term. Like everybody has their threshold. Like you're going to run out of it sooner or later. Now, some people are, are very determined, very, you know, very more disciplined than others. And they might be able to stick it out for, for months on end. Others might only be able to stick it out for a few weeks. Others may only be able to stick it out for a few days. Right? Right. I mean, you, see, you see some people start a diet for a few days and like, oh, I can't do this and they quit. Uh, I mean, some can do it for a few weeks, some few months, but eventually even the most hardened person is eventually going to give in. Like we all have our limits. And then once you give in, like that's when it's just like, oh, screw it. I don't care anymore. And then that's when the binge eating starts. Yeah. And I mean, I, I was guilty of that myself. Like I, I could dedicate myself for maybe like three to four months at a time. But after that, I was like, look out. <laughs> and of course, coming from the bodybuilding background, like I was always, my deadline was the, the bodybuilding show itself. Yeah. And as soon as that contest was over and placings were done and the pictures were taken, then look out here, here comes the all you can eat buffet. And here comes, you know, the ice cream shop and the, the bakery and whatever. It's just, you know, whatever I was craving, I would eat it and I didn't care. And like months to lose it, only a few weeks to gain it all back. And yeah. it was a vicious cycle. Like that's the yo-yo diet cycle up and down, up and down. And I, I see so many former competitive athletes and bodybuilders and fitness models go through this. A lot of people that I used to compete with back in the day, Sometimes when I run into those people now in public, it's, it's scary. Cause I'm like, I remember you back when you were a ripped bodybuilder and now I'm seeing them. And like a lot of them are quite, quite honestly, just very overweight because they went through that extreme all or nothing approach and they haven't learned how to maintain it. And that's what we want to focus on here is not the extreme all or nothing, but having this lifestyle approach where you can enjoy the process and maintain it. And uh, I purposely 
allow myself to have those those cravings and satisfy those cravings. I mean, one of my strategies is I, I don't want to let the craving build up. This is something, I mean, I've, I've mentioned this with our coaching group and stuff like that, but I find like if I'm craving something, I'm going to satisfy that craving right away and, and have a small serving of it. Let's just say I'm having, I'm craving pizza, right? Well, okay, I'm going to have myself a slice of pizza. I'm going to thoroughly enjoy it. And then I'm going to like be able to get that craving out of my system so I can forget about it and move on. Whereas if I keep saying, no, I don't, I can't have that pizza. I can't have the pizza. Eventually it's just going to build up and build up and build up. And then it's like, screw it. And you're going to eat, you know, sit down and eat a whole pizza by yourself. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas if you just have one slice or whatever and just kind of get that craving out of your system, then you can like forget it and move on. And that applies with anything. I mean, I'm using pizza as an example, but it could be cake or cookies or ice cream or whatever. I mean, have a small serving, enjoy it, get that craving out of your system and move on. And I do that frequently. I mean, I might be a couple times a week. I'll, I'll give into those cravings, but it's like just nip it in the bud, move on, nip the craving, move on instead of letting it build. And you start obsessing over it. Yeah. Right. Like you, you know this yourself. I mean, you're a father. I mean, if, if, if you tell a child they can't do something or they can't have something, it makes them want to do it more. And we're, and we're, we're all just big ch children. So if I tell you, you can't have pizza, you want pizza even more. Or if I tell you, you can't have ice cream, then all of a sudden, what do you want? You want ice cream. Mm -hmm. So that's the, the secret to this whole program is like, there's nothing off limits. Like you can literally have whatever it is that you want, but we're going to do it in, in, a, in a structured fashion so that you get the craving satisfied and then move on, right? Satisfy it and move on. I mean, it's, it's a different mindset, but I mean, it's one that can be a lifestyle approach. So you don't feel like you're, you're depriving or, or, or going without. Well, that was the thing about the literature. Um, yeah. When I started looking at the food list that you provide and it was eat more, eat some and eat less. It wasn't a yes or no. It was, you can have some of these things on the eat less side of things, but just eat less of them and try to trend more towards that eat more category. Yes. If, uh -huh. if the majority of what you eat comes from the eat more side of the ledger, when the week's in, you're in good, you know, you're, you're better off than where you were the week before, you're trending in the right direction. Yeah. Uh, so that was great to see, you know, to see things on that list of like, I saw a candy bar and I, I saw pizza, I saw hamburgers, I saw fries and milkshakes or whatever. It was like, oh, those are over here on this side of the ledger. So don't hit that side as much as you hit the other side, but they're still there. Mm -hmm. um, and that goes into something else that you alluded to. This is a lifestyle. This isn't a diet. This, this is a lifestyle. And it's an easily sustainable lifestyle once you've practiced it for a while. It, it just becomes, it becomes habitual. And it, mm -hmm. it really becomes second nature. And like you said, because there's not a lot of restrictions placed on this, if the, you know, if the mood hits you to, to have two slices of pizza for supper that night it's like all right i'm gonna have my two slices of pizza but i got my big salad there next to it you know and and i'm gonna i'm gonna have that salad and i'm gonna fill up and i'm still gonna be able to enjoy that little bit of the of the pizza and i've accounted for it and i know that the next meal is right back on track and mm -hmm. i'm good to go i don't sweat it and I, I don't you know i don't stress over it and it's not one of these things like i feel like i got to do extra cardio to burn it off and none of that crap it eat it enjoy it move on yeah so that's that's something that you know anybody that's watching this um to to realize is that this is a lifestyle that you you learn through this this isn't a diet this is something that you'll carry forward once you graduate from the program yeah and if you just keep following this structure you're not gonna have the balloon up and the weight gain and stuff like that it was really nice when i got into the the vip coaching program like I said, is it wasn't as, you know, it wasn't as demanding. I didn't, you know, you're not expecting me to log into my fitness pal five, six times a day. And, and you're not sitting there checking each one of those logins to make sure that I did it. You know, <laughs> it's going to show up in the progress pictures. It's going to show up on the scale if I'm putting in the effort, you know, so I'm not going to yeah. be able to hide that from you. Um, so it, it was, it was just very nice to, to realize that I could come into the program and actually back off a little bit from what I had been doing and right. get the results I wanted. Um, so for anybody who's coming at this, you know, from the standpoint of they've never really been in a, a program and they're, they're looking at getting into training program for the first time and they're worried about it, don't be, because what you're going to find is the nutritional side of this is really simple once you get an understanding of it and it's sustainable. That's the big thing is this is sustainable. This isn't a, a 90 day thing or like you used to do where you would have your you know, your contest preps, this, this is a year round thing. 
And if you do right. it right, mm-hmm. you're going to be fine. And it, it allows you to have the, the goodies in there too. That's the best part about it is, yeah, like you said, you're not, you're not restricting it to the point where if it's totally restricted, you're going to desire it even more. It's right there for you. Just eat a little less of it than you would have before. And you're going to be fine. I've, I've talked to a lot of people over the years who've been in different programs or followed different diets or had coaches or whatever. And, and some people get mad. Like I've heard of one of my former students. He said he, he had a, a coach and this person was specialized in coaching like bodybuilders and fitness competitors. So like used to like very strict, very regimented. And I mean, there is a time and a place for, for a strict regimented diet in those kind of situations. But for the average person who's looking to lose weight, and build muscle and just have a, a lifestyle approach, you don't need that extreme drill surge and approach. But I remember they like, told him that he uh, cheated on his diet and, and like the coach got mad at him, like, like full on got mad at him, you know, like, like trying to discipline him almost like you discipline a child or something. I mean, like, but at the same time, he still made progress. So like he, he had his weekly check-in with his coach. Yes, he was down a couple pounds on the scale, but when he admitted that he did have a cheat meal in there, the coach, instead of celebrating his progress, he got mad at him for the cheat meal. As long as you're moving in the right direction, like who cares if it's perfect? Yeah. It's almost like, you know, the analogy of like a ship that's at sea. I mean, if it's heading to a destination, I mean, it's not going to be on track 100% of the time. It can be off track a little bit, but as long as it's moving in the general direction and you're going to get there, like who cares? You don't need to stress out over trying to be perfect 100% of the time. You can have that little bit of flexibility. As long as you keep getting back on track, you'll eventually get there. And that's the cool thing. I think you acknowledge this. It's, it's This isn't a, a 90 day program or a 30 day shred or a six week cut or a whatever you want to call it. Like, no, this is the rest of your life. Yeah. There's no deadline here. And once you take that deadline out of the equation, it's like the stress is off you because a lot of people, they, they th- go on a diet and they think, well, I'm, I'm on a, a 12 week program. And then as the weeks go by, they think, well, like, I got to be, I got to be close to my goal because of oh, the 12 week program is coming up and, you know, I'm almost finished. It's like, no, there is no finish line. It's like, <laughs> as long as you're moving forward, as long as you're continuously making progress, that's it. I mean, if it takes you 12 weeks, 12 months or, or whatever, who cares? As long as you eventually get there. And then the cool thing is get there and stay there, not backtrack again. Right. And, you know, I could see myself eating the way I typically do on a daily basis for yeah. I mean, I'll get to a point where we might, we might adjust the, the calories up a little bit if, if the, the mass gains aren't showing up the way we want, or right. we might back it down a little bit if, if I'm starting to add a little bit of fat, but eventually I'm going to hit a point where I'm good with how I look and feel, and you're going to say, okay, maintain, just yeah. do what you're doing. I mean, just keep it where it's at. I mean, that, so there's a lot of guesswork taken out of it, a lot of headaches taken out of it, and people don't believe me sometimes until I'll show them a picture of the plate of food I took just to prove that, no, I ate this yesterday, <laughs> today, you know, because yeah. um, people will think that I'm full of crap about some of that stuff. They won't, they're like, no, 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 you had to do the chicken and broccoli and rice thing right. for most yeah. of your meals. And you were doing an hour and a half of cardio a day. It's like, no, I've got the data on all this stuff. I can show you my workout logs. I can, I can show you kind of what I had eaten. Um, it, it couldn't be further from the truth. Um, basically the VIP program is a real program for real guys is how I would, I, how I would best describe it is there's not a lot of fluff in here. We're not being taught a lot of crap. It's not backed by science or may or may not work. We're mm. being taught real meal planning strategies that are going to help us achieve our goals, be it fat loss, body recomp, mass gain, whatever. Mm. And then in the, the, the weight room portion of things, we're not being asked to do anything crazy and, and wear ourselves into the ground. Um, you do a really good job of uh, looking at where we are currently with our our physical fitness, where we want to go, what kind of equipment we have, and then how can I help you where you're at and any kind of limitations you might have, I'll, you know, I'll help you work around them and I'll help you work with your equipment. But it really is a customized program that's designed to your desired outcome. That's uh-huh. the beauty of it, you know, is it didn't take long for me to realize that once I had gotten into the program that. I had definitely made the right choice because like I said, just comparing to the program I had come out of, this was so much less restrictive and it wasn't, and when I say not as demanding in the weight room, don't take that the wrong way. I still push myself, you know, I, I'm, I'm still, you know, when I get done, I've, I've had a good session, but it's, it's controlled. You know, it, it's, I'm not buttoned up against, you know, getting hurt or, 
overtraining or anything like right. that. I, mm -hmm. I just feel like, you know, you've designed this with the 40 plus crowd in mind, yeah. you know, all the way around. And it's obviously it's working. Yeah. Uh, I'm glad you feel that way. And I, uh, and that is so true. Like I've, I've put this together with that mentality of, okay, this is for someone who is over 40, your recovery is not the same. You need to respect your body more. And, and when it comes to the workouts, like a lot of people have this like no pain, no gain mentality, or like, you, you know, more is better. It's sounds cool and everything else, but it's, it's not the way it works in the real world. Like if you are experiencing pain, there's a reason you're experiencing pain. That's your body's check engine light saying, Hey, something's wrong here. Like do not try and work through the pain. And, and like when it comes to your workouts, you just need to do enough to stimulate muscle growth. And then that's it. Like you don't have to overkill. Like you don't have to destroy the muscle. You just need to stimulate it. So yep. yeah, I mean, you're still going to be training consistently and still pushing yourself. But like I say, it's a controlled push, if you will. Like once you've, okay, I've done enough and that's it. We can stop, right? We don't need to go in there to, you know, destroy the body and then you'd be painfully sore the next day where you can't move. That, that's, that's not helping. That's actually hindering your progress because it's delaying the whole recovery yeah you just need to go in there do enough to, to stimulate a response and then rest recover and grow and let the body adapt in the process and it's a, a different mindset it really is it's just being more respectful of the body and not this overkill approach that a lot of people have yeah and i think that's that's something that anybody that would would take a look at the program who's got any kind of a background in health and fitness and, mm -hmm. and that kind of stuff they might actually at first kind of take a step back because of the simplicity of everything yeah um, I really i honestly expected it to be more complicated and i'm not saying that this is like a walk in the park kind of stuff but right i just expected more layers of, right. of, of crap to have to dig through more and layers it, of crap. <laughs> and it was like here's yeah. your plan here's your meal plan um mm -hmm. if you have any questions let me know and it was like okay i can do this i can mm -hmm. i can i know i can do this and uh you know to to admit that you need to make the changes for a lot of guys is tough. And you've had that moment of reckoning now where, okay, I don't like where I'm at and I need to go somewhere different. The last thing you want to do is take on a program that, that starts to seem almost impossible before you even get started. Yeah. And so, you know, certain things, you know, if I would have seen certain things in the, in the program, when you had, you know, got the literature and everything out to me to, when we, you know, we did the onboarding, I would have been nervous. Um, even having the background I have, I would have been kind of nervous because I'm just coming off of a program that was, it was pretty demanding. And there were some compliance issues within that program from students. And I, after being in your program now, I understand why. Um, we were being asked to do a lot more in that program than we probably should have, especially uh -huh. what we were after. Um, what you're asking us to do here in this program is, is nothing that is what I would consider like dangerous or, or going to get you hurt. Or the big thing though is once again I'll keep hammering this point home is this is sustainable. But yeah, I can't say enough about the program and and honestly too, um, just from a like a coaching standpoint, you do a really good job of being accessible to the group members, considering you know you've got coaching students that you've got to take care of and, and you've got a family and and you know you're active in some of the other groups where you're resident coaches and you're offering your help on Facebook and other areas and. And you know, I've seen you on YouTube videos from other places. And stuff. So, you know, you're a busy guy. Um, yeah. But as a coaching student, I know that I have access to you. And I know I can schedule in my, my monthly coaching call and you're going to help me out. Uh, uh -huh. But I know in between those scheduled calls, if I need something, it, it's a Facebook Messenger message and, and you're going to get back to me as quickly as you can and help me out. If it's something really pressing, You'll even take the time to record a video and send us the video if it needs to be addressed like that. You're there for support. Considering uh, the support side of the program is probably as important, if not more important, than the actual weightlifting and nutrition side of things. Mm -hmm. Because you know you could give us the best weightlifting and nutrition plans in the world, but if you weren't there to kind of help pick us up when we need it or help get us back on track, we would we would not succeed with that program. Mm -hmm. um, so. From that standpoint, we've got a great, you know, program as far as the nutrition and the weightlifting side goes, but we've got a, a coach that's there for you to help you when you need it. So um, that's why I think I've seen so many guys in the program have the success that they have had or they are currently having. We've got the right things there, the right tools, all that they need to succeed, but we've got the support in place. 
Um, right. And if for some reason, let's say you're out on a bike ride for a couple hours, for some of the other guys that are helping you out are going to get in there and we'll step in there and, and kind of help to address something until you can get to it, you know? Um, so there's yeah, a, it's a coaching group, right? I mean, because you're getting feedback from everybody within the group. It's not just me. Yeah. It's a community. I mean, now granted, I like to oversee it all, but I know what you mean. Yeah, we got, you got the feedback of the community, which makes it a, a nice because... Now you don't feel like you're going through the program by yourself. You can actually follow along and like, you feel like, okay, I'm part of a team. I'm part of a group. And then you can see how you stack up against some of the other guys. And it, it's, yeah. it's almost like a friendly competition. I mean, it's, it's not like we're trying to outdo one another, but we're trying to encourage one another, yeah. right? We yeah. want, to, we want to succeed together. And it's, it's nice to see everybody. Like when we do in our, our regular check-ins on the group, it's nice to see everybody posting their, their progress and sharing their wins and stuff like that. And, and if you're having some trouble, we'll share that as well. We can, we'll work through that, but it's nice to see the group succeed together. You know, along those lines too, is I've, I've made friends now outside of the group with guys from the group and now yeah. we'll, we'll chit chat online just sure. about life stuff in general. That's not even related to weight loss or muscle building or anything like yeah. that. Um, and man, I just, it, what, one of the things cool with the group is we've got people from all over the world. Yes. So just, it's just really neat to, to see and, and hear the different sounds and the different sights, you know, to see when people are in different countries and just what, what are yep. their conditions and, and things like that. Um, but mm -hmm. one thing that's universal is this program works. It doesn't, you know, regardless of the, the language you speak or where you reside, I mean, there's just certain principles in this program that they work wherever you are, as long as you put them into place. So yeah. Um, but yeah, that is a big thing too with the group. So that's that is part of the support that um, that I think really does help people succeed, uh, especially the new guys that have come in here the last few weeks, few months, and have been good about sharing their progress and their updates. And and so you know, it's really easy to get behind everybody and cheer them on. And like you said, it's a friendly competition. You know, and you know you know that so and so can do X amount of pull ups in one one set. Okay, well, there's there's the new target. I got to get up to that now. You know, yeah, that, that's kind of fun. But all in all, man, it's it's been a great time in the group. You know, I'm passionate about this stuff, and I've I've benefited from it. And like I said, I've got my son involved in this now. He he just turned 18 recently. Um, you know, he put on about 25 pounds in a year. It's really it's enhanced our father son uh, relationship. Really, kind of what what started it in May of 2019 is my grandfather had passed away. You know, anytime you have a an experience like that, it, you kind of reset and, and think of where you're at. And what I knew was if I kept up the lifestyle that I was living, that mm -hmm. I wasn't going to probably make it to his age. I would be lucky if I made it to 80, you know, or whatever. Mm -hmm. I, um, one, one of the benefits of this is I haven't touched a drop of alcohol since May of 2019, and I probably never will again. Now, granted, if we wanted to have a beer here or there in this program, you can do it. Mm -hmm. you can do it it's just for me alcohol seemed like it was going to push me further away from my goal than closer right. to it and so i i cut out some things that were pushing me away from that goal so this has been good from that standpoint as well here was another thing that always that played with me too was you know like i said earlier i, I was an athlete when i was younger so i yeah. knew what it was like to be in good shape when i was younger sure. yeah. there's still part of that athlete in there and, you know, he, he wasn't happy with what he was seeing in the mirror kind of thing. And mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. voice was kind of you know, in my ear again. So there were a lot of factors there, but mm -hmm. most guys, you get to an age where if you haven't been consistent, it shows. And I just didn't like the way I looked and the way I felt. And I can definitely say now I definitely look better. I feel better. I like how I look. I like how I feel. Um, and it's that cyclical process. You know, right. This just keeps me more engaged and keeps me going at it. So that's kind of the story in a nutshell. Way to go, man. I, I respect that. And, and, and I mean, sometimes we need those wake up calls to really like, where am I going? Am, am I happy with that situation and stuff? And, and I've had a, a lot of similar situations myself. Like I've had relatives who've, who've passed away way too young, like in their 50s and 60s. And I'm like, OK, I'm in my 40s. I mean, I'm not that far away from those ages. I'm like, I don't want to go down that road. And the sad thing is a lot of these younger deaths like I, i've had several uncles die in their 50s my, my father-in-law died in his 50s cancer heart attack stroke diabetes like all, all of the, the big big ones in, in almost all these cases it's self-inflicted through through diet and lifestyle choices right so i mean it's like this is something that 
for the most part, we have good control over. I mean, I'm not guaranteeing that, hey, this is a cure. Like, you know, hey, if you look after your diet and exercise, you're never going to get sick. Who knows what's going to happen? But man, you're just like stacking the deck in your favor. Like you're, you're going to be prolonging your, your life to the best of your ability by taking proactive action. And, you know, and that, that was my big motivation as well, right? Because I didn't want to go down that road. And I mean, I've got a, a four-year-old son and I want to be his role model, right? I don't want him to grow up with a fat, out of shape dad. And when he was born... Right. And then I started to let myself go. That's the direction I was heading. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's nice now, like when, when we're playing and stuff like that, he's, he's four years old, he's into superheroes and stuff. So like, if, if he sees me with my shirt off, he says, daddy, you look like the Hulk. Right. <laughs> and I mean, Hey man, what, what an ego boost. Right. And I'm so much, I'm so happy that I mean, okay, he's, he's referring to me as the Hulk and referring to me as a superhero rather than like, Hey daddy, look, look how big your belly is or, or something like that. Right. Like Santa Claus. Yeah. Yeah. I'd, I'd rather be referred to the Hulk than Santa Claus. Right? <laughs> yeah. But I mean, that, that's my motivation. I mean, just to be as healthy. I mean, obviously, I mean, there's a bit of ego in there as well. No doubt about it. I mean, Hey, you know, if you go on a vacation or you go to a swimming pool or whatever, it's nice to be able to take your shirt off and be, uh, if not the fittest, among one of the fittest guys at the beach or the pool or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, rather than being embarrassed by trying to cover up and hide your gut or whatever. Well, you know, kind of along those lines, actually, um, something that happened a little bit before my grandfather had passed away is, was a few mm -hmm. months prior to that, is we yeah. had been to Florida for a vacation. Oh, okay. And when it came time to take my shirt off and go play on the beach, I didn't right. like it at all. And I'm like, I'll just take a sleeveless shirt down there, you know? And right, yeah, yeah. I'm like, okay, I'll get in the water, but I'm going to go up to like Nick High and I'm running right tonight, towel, towel off and throwing a shirt on. And so, you know, um, unfortunately, COVID kind of killed off our chance to go to the beach this past summer. Sure. But I, that was one of the motivators. I'm not going to be, you know, ashamed. And if we were to go to the beach today, I'd be cool versus. Right. A year ago or two years ago i don't know so mm. um so yeah that was another one of those motivators but it's just things like that you know um been there done it and don't want to do it again that has such a huge impact on how you look and just being comfortable in your own skin like to be comfortable to take your shirt off it, it just has a, such a huge impact i mean like on, on so many levels i mean obviously like going to the beach and vacationing and stuff like that i mean it's it's cool but even with your, your, your intimate relationship with your significant other, I mean, like, I mean, she, she's not around, so I can say this, but I was so embarrassed by like how fat and out of shape I was back a few years ago that like, I'd always go to bed with a t-shirt on, right? Like I didn't, I, I, I just didn't want her to see my belly, right? Cause I was embarrassed by the fact that I had a belly and I mean, it's, I, I would do whatever I could to try and cover it up and like say, summer times and stuff like that it could be you know the, the hottest kind of day out there and i'm still wearing a t-shirt <laughs> or, or, or i'm wearing a tank top anyway because i'm going to cover the gut it's such a nice feeling to be comfortable in your own skin yep. right yeah i mean and that's such a confidence booster right i was mm -hmm. a bit hesitant at first to make that kind of investment myself and then so, it occurred to me one day that that was the perfect reason to make the investment in myself because what was stopping me was a lack of confidence Mm. I've gained that confidence now through going through that cut and now that build back up, you know, um, Perfect. I knew it would, I knew I would get the results I was looking for in the weight room, in the kitchen. What I wasn't expecting was the friendships I've developed in the group. Like I said, I can't say enough good things about it. It's, it's been great working with you. And, and like I say, I know like we're just getting started. I mean, it's been six months. I mean, but like I say, we've built such a friendship and connection. Like th this, it, it's not just a coaching program. It's it's a friendship and a mentorship. Like I refer to it as a friender. <laughs> that's what I call it, a, fr a friender. Because ultimately that's what it is. Like when it comes to, to diet and exercise advice, I mean, like you don't need more information. Like all the information that's ever been created is already out there on the internet now. Like you go Google search workout programs and you'll get a million search results. You go Google search diet plans, you'll get a million search results. Like everything that's ever been created with regards to exercise and nutrition advice, it's already out there. The problem is we're in the stage now of information overload. Mm -hmm. it's, there's too much. And then there's a lot of people who are making it overly complicated. True wisdom is not accumulation. <clears throat> It's not just trying to get more, more diet plans, more workouts, more exercises, more, more, more. True wisdom is elimination. 
It's like cutting out the crap that you don't need and focusing on the few things that are actually going to be applicable for you, your situation, what it is you want to achieve, and just focusing on that while ignoring all the other noise that's out there. And that's the problem with, with the internet these days. Is there's so much noise. Prime example, we, we've got doctors who are preaching a carnivore diet, and then you have doctors preaching a vegan diet. I mean, you can't have two totally <laughs> opposing. And then they're talking about the health benefits of both. And then and here I am, well, how about we take the best of, of, of a, a carnivore diet, you know, like good quality animal protein sources, and how about we take the best of a vegan diet, good quality plant-based sources, and why not have just a nice, well-balanced diet? <laughs> like, it sounds so simple, and it is, it really is. Like, once you cut out the crap and you focus on, like, it just I eat a well-balanced diet and have a good structured exercise program, you know, that's stimulating, it's not overkill, and just have a, a good solid system to follow. And the one, the big thing that I'm doing with a lot of people is I'm actually holding back the reins <laughs> because a lot of people want to do too much too soon and then burn themselves out in the process. And they're like, no, we don't need to do that much. You be, like, that's one of the biggest things you've noticed this yourself is it's actually easier. The commitment and the work volume and then the process is actually easier than you thought it was going to be. And that's a lot of times people, they think it's going to be harder than it actually is. I mean, when you really learn like, see the truth of what's involved you just have to be good enough but good enough consistently yeah. right you don't have to be this it doesn't have to be something you dread right it yeah. doesn't have to be something you wake up in the morning and you know you, you got a weird feeling in your gut because you're like oh i can't I, i'm dreading going to the gym today or i'm dreading another day of dieting or no it, it's actually quite enjoyable <laughs> I, I wouldn't go back to the way i ate before this <laughs> right that's mm -hmm. like i was saying earlier i'm i could see myself doing this infinitely it's, it's not a it's not painful it's 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 actually more enjoyable to to eat a, and live a healthy lifestyle than it is to live an unhealthy lifestyle and then suffer this, the consequences you know I, i'm a perfectionist at heart so i had to give up some, right. some uh, tight control but man once i kind of just you know just let go and, and follow the program yeah. it, it, it it's it's made it easier like you said i don't dread it i, I look forward it's to my weight lifting sessions and it's it's not treachery in the kitchen and it's not boring it's one thing i always tell people if your diet and exercise program has a start and an end date the results are only temporary ah. right like it, with this there is no end date it's just right. i'm gonna get better each day yep one percent better each day <laughs> yeah and that little mantra does help i mean yeah um you know because like we've talked about it if you really stick to that in 100 days you're hundred percent better. Yeah, yeah, it does. But I mean, again, it, it doesn't mean that you stop after a hundred days. <laughs> right. You just, but you know, yeah. you know, you nailed it really. You just, it, I've been through programs that, that expect the world and then some of you and right. you dread it. And actually, you know, when I talked about doing a transformation in my late thirties and then not touching anything for a number of years, part of that was because that original program I had went through was so restrictive that right. I did not want to do any of that again. Mm -hmm. Some extreme um, fluctuations in calories with some, some carb cycling in there, which can work for some and others. Um, and, and then there, the, I mean, I was talking about two hours plus in the weight room and just mm -mm, that, that, that yeah. you know, this was a total different, you know, 180. I, I know I can do this. Nice. This was before where it was like, I don't want to do that. And you had that experience, you know, you just, it was more extreme Yeah. But it was along those same lines of you knew what you needed to do, but the price you were going to have to pay, you didn't want to pay it. Yeah. But then you found a different way in between now and then that allowed you to get back into that shape while still, you know, enjoying the foods that you, you like and not killing yourself in the weight room. And now you've passed that on to the guys in the VIP program and we benefit from that. So like I've said, man, I can't say enough good things about it. Um, awesome. Best investment I've made. Looking forward to continuing to work with you. And thanks again for sharing your time. Much You're appreciated. Welcome. So I hope you found this conversation helpful. And if you'd like to get some more information about the Muscle After 40 Blueprint and a coaching program to help you realize your fitness and fat loss goals this year, then just reach out to me. I'll have a link in the uh, description below this video or down in the first comment. Somewhere below, you'll be able to see a link where you can sign up for a free strategy session call with me. And we'll jump on the phone or Skype or Zoom or some sort of audio chat. And we'll just have a conversation, right? We'll have a chat, just you and me. 
and discuss your situation, your goals, the challenges you're going through, and see if we can come up with a realistic step-by-step -step action plan that works for you. And if we can, then I'll let you know about the different options we have available for coaching. And if I feel that it's not a good fit, then I'll recommend some outside resources and some experts that can help you to reach your goals. Like I've got a big network in the fitness industry. I've been doing this for a long time. And if I can't help you, then I will find somebody who will. So either way, at the end of our strategy session call, you'll come away with more insights, clarity, and action steps on what you need to do to make your fitness and fat loss goals a reality this year. So again, if you want to get some more information, you want to get results like Jason did, uh, I mean, he's made an amazing transformation and he's still making progress. Every time we chat, he's getting better and better. And that's what I like to see. It's just this continuous, nonstop, never ending improvement. That's what we're focusing on. And I would love nothing more than to help you do the same. So if you want to become a before and after success story, then let me know. Reach out. I'll be more than happy to help you make those goals a reality. So again, click on the link that's down in the description or down in the first comment, open that up, book in a time and have a chat with me and uh, let's, let's get this happening. All right, have yourself a good one and I'll talk to you soon.